They say that talking to yourself is a sign of insanity. But I think that's only if you answer back, right? Right. This is Talking to Myself, an art advice podcast where I use anecdotes from my life to try to make myself a better artist and hopefully a better person. Although others may find this information useful or instructive, mostly I'm just trying to avoid paying for therapy. On today's podcast, I thought we'd talk about education and as it relates to art. Um, as I've mentioned before on the podcast here, my education in art has been fairly extensive. I took all the art classes in grade school and in high school. I was in art honor society and all this other stuff. Then when I went to college, I changed my major from biology to art in an effort to avoid getting kicked out of college for bad grades and a general lack of giving a crap about college. So I changed my major to studio art with a concentration on printmaking because I was really into printmaking at the time and also because of this painting teacher I had. Here's the story for this week. I had several classes with this painting teacher in college, um, intro to mid-level painting. I took some advanced painting courses, but not with this particular teacher. The reason she was such a big impact on me was because of her completely unvarnished and unobscured preference for a certain type of art. Now, in the class, it's not necessarily competitive in art classes. If any of you have had classes before officially, you know that there's a critique session where everyone sort of puts up what they've done and everyone in the class discusses it. And the teacher uses this as a hopefully as a teaching moment to step in and go, well, here's how you get the language of discussion and how you can describe things and how you can encourage each other and things like that and how you can learn. But she took it very much as an example of, um, here's a chance for me to tell you why this type of art is not as good as the type of art that I like. Her favorite type of art was abstract. Not abstract expressionism necessarily, mostly just geometric abstract stuff. For instance, we had a, a, an assignment where we were just supposed to make something of a certain size, just trying to get us used to painting large and all that. And we stretched our own canvases and we sealed them with, um, I think it was rabbit skin glue in this case, instead of gesso, which is interesting. But then one of the students painted what amounts to a giant red circle in the center of his canvas. He primed it with white, left the brush strokes in so it had some kind of interest it was it was not bad technically it was interesting but it wasn't there wasn't as much thought put into it as the teacher reacted like there was i think her assumption was that abstraction was a higher level of artistic expression than than representation so if you do a mediocre portrait of someone a less than mediocre geometric abstraction of that is a higher artistic expression and by less than i mean in the same person's opinion as far as technical qualities go, which in my opinion, that's all school can judge you on. They can give you the technical tools to express yourself and try to explain to you how how to think more deeply about things and how to find more to express, but they can't really judge you the quality of your work based on the ideas that you're having. Not when you're trying to learn how to make art. Their job, in my opinion, should be to teach you the skills, teach you the interpretation, and guide you as you use those skills to make your own interpretations encourage you and uh help help you get better help you get better expressing what you want to show in this case show because we're talking about visual art but this teacher wasn't really about that she was more about this is the best painting in the class so it's going to get an a and everyone else will be judged sort of relative to that now, almost everyone in the class did figurative work including myself um for that project and I've never been great with human figure. I've, I've gotten a lot better with it throughout the years, mostly because I use it as a basis to make distorted monsters on. You can't really make a werewolf without knowing how a humanoid biped looks, right? <laughs> but um, I never really got any abstraction stuff. I've done some abstracted work. I've, I've abstracted, I've used abstraction as a style, a stylistic choice, but I've never used it as a main mode of expression. Maybe she's right. Maybe abstraction is the next logical step, artistically speaking. But I don't think a classroom is the right place to have that kind of attitude. Because you're discouraging people who are trying to achieve something relatable to non-artists and to beginning artists, their peers. You're discouraging them in favor of someone who just happens to attempt uh, something that you think is more lofty, artistically speaking, or intellectually speaking. Now, it's possible that that kid in the class that got the really good grade for the 
the red circle painting was really good artistically speaking he was in the top of all my other art classes he was a good artist he was hard working he, he tried things he did a lot of things but also i'd like to point out something else the next week we had another similar assignment and um one of my fellow students who was very upset about the teacher's attitude and opinion towards abstraction decided he was going to forget what he was trying to do and expressing and just going to go for the grade so he did like a giant triangle and he got an A. <laughs> so he was more about playing the game to get the grade because he knew he wasn't learning anything in the class. Whereas I stupidly just ignored the grade and kept trying to do the best kind of art I could do. Which of us was right? I have no idea. <laughs> Which of the three of us was right? Myself, the, the rebel guy, or the, the guy who did the A to begin with? Which of us is making art now? I mean, professionally. Maybe none of us. I mean, I consider myself partial, partially semi-pro, but it's not my job, my main job. If any of the three of us are making gallery art for a living, I'd have to say it's probably that first kid, unless he burned out completely and is now not doing any art at all. But then again, I've never really been trying to do gallery art. I do think art can exist for its own sake, but I want, I want art to exist in a structure like where it becomes part of people's lives not just something to look at as an, a separation from normal life. I'd like, like game art is part of people's normal lives or movie poster art or, you know, toys, things like that. Things that become artifacts rather than put it on a pedestal and look at it with a spotlight, don't get too close to it because there's an alarm art, you know? That's just my opinion. So in general, education, it has been useful to me. It allowed me access to some hardware and some training that I wouldn't be very difficult, very hard pressed to come by in the real world at the time. Nowadays, there's a lot more in the way of educational material for artists out there in the world. YouTube is chock full of it. There are all kinds of artists offering tutorials and guidance and uh, programs where they take they take someone under the wing and tutor them. So you can get some, you can really get some personalized art tutorial from people that you know and respect that do what you want to do. So it's a lot more targeted now. At the time, there was nothing like that. So I'm, I am glad I went to school, and I'm glad I got a degree in art. I did learn some things that would be really hard to learn otherwise, because it's no matter how dedicated you may be to trying out some kind of art thing, you're not going to be able to buy a $12,000 printing press without some sort of way of making money off of it. <laughs> that would be insane. You might buy a lot of drawing materials and painting materials, but printmaking is kind of expensive. So, I'm glad I went to school for that. However, had, it, had I to do it over again today, more than likely I'd save all the money I've spent on college and do everything online and try to do it myself. Maybe that would light a fire under me to actually get more done and I'd be further ahead than I am now. Who knows? I mean, something has to, right? <laughs> so, as far as my opinion on school goes, if you feel like you're going to need access to the community, access to the technology, uh, access to guidance if you can get it then definitely consider school maybe you don't consider a full university degree in it if that's because this the hoops you have to jump through just to get to the part where you're focused on art it's pretty significant i went through two full years of school college before i was able to even get into art classes mostly or anything serious i could take intro classes that don't mean anything that people audit all the time for free if you wanted to get into art and you want an education think about maybe a specific art school if you're planning on going to school for it. I don't think you have to, is my bottom line. And as far as trying to learn something from my past, I think that going my own way is kind of the way I like to do it. And hopefully the people that like the things I do will be willing to buy them. But I don't feel like I need to try to work towards a gallery show or trying to please critics. Especially those who have narrow-minded opinions. No disrespect to that teacher, but that's that's not the way I'd want a teacher to teach my kid how to do art. As always, this rambling, just meandering podcast is mostly me trying to sort out some some information, some advice for myself. I plan on using these to listen to later on when I need inspiration or I need to remember why I'm doing this or what I'm doing. 
but if anyone else has gotten anything out of it, I, I'm glad. Very happy for you. That's good. That's what you call an excellent side benefit. Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Your support makes me extremely happy and keeps me going on this. You guys get to see these a week early because you are the shiniest people I know. Thanks to everyone for listening to this. Hopefully it helps you some. Take care. Isolate if you need to isolate. We're in the middle of a health crisis in this world right now. Use the chance to uh, work on some stuff if you can. Abstract, figurative, make it up, whatever. If you make things, keep making things. And I will catch you next time. <laughs>